This video is fast-paced, borderline inconclusive, and at a maximal threshold for pure lunacy. This is going to go off the rails very quickly if I don't go slow, but I'm feeling the crushing inevitability of this theory as it seeps from me. October 13, 2017. I diagnosed Patrick Starr with trauma-induced anxiety triggered spontaneously duplicative multi-intellectual DID with additional paranoid schizophrenic delusions of a mental multiverse. January 31, 2020. I roasted Gary the Snail and then deemed him unfit for human interaction, classifying him as an anomalous four-dimensional alien dolphin from Jupiter who was ejected from the Illuminati to Bikini Bottom and forced devolved into an apathetic gastropod mollusk. I hope you've seen both of these theory trilogies of mine, and also that you've seen my video covering the flying Dutchman, where I continued to chip away at Bikini Bottom's dimensional anomalies. On the other hand, if you're new here, no, I'm not joking. The theories are airtight and bulletproof, no matter how severely I embellish them with dramatic flair. Yes, Gary is a four-dimensional dolphin, or at least that's what the evidence would suggest. I'm not joking, just watch them, because today I'm going to attempt the first big theory crossover I promised between Patrick, Gary, and surprisingly, Plankton, who I made a short little theory on as well. This should come as a shock to no one, because as I'm sure you're all aware by now, Patrick and Gary have an indisputable link that shakes me to my fucking core. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Theorizer. There seems to have been a mild renaissance in Spongebob theories in this first half of 2021, which is beneficial to my unrelenting assault on Bikini Bottom's lore. First, it was the Spongebob channel themselves, who started mocking this content with that Bikini Bottom Mysteries series, oh, so they think they can silence me with snark. You expand my willpower tenfold. But then the real party begins. There was that skin theory video that bulldozed the algorithm a while back, and Alex Bale, a YouTuber who's commented some great evidence in the past, also started making some. Because Bikini Bottom can't be allowed to continue its desolation crusade, so it's beneficial to keep everyone in the mindset no matter the toll on stable mentality. After all, my videos were infamously blacklisted for being taboo and then struck by Viacom. They can copyright claim me all they damn want, but by claiming the content, they canonize it at their own peril. So here. Here we are, here. This is the first notable thread to pull, followed of course by this. If you recall, this was the ultimate piece of surprise evidence at the end of the third and final Gary video. That video crammed two hours of dimensional dissertation into a 30 minute package. There's a lot of things I say quite casually and hope you catch, like how a nuclear explosion tore open the fabric of space time, how Spongebob's all just an Inception style show and it's not a TV show, and how Krabby Patties are feng shui modulators. Some of those came full circle, but today is another big one. As for that surprise, evidence I caught at the very end of the trilogy, I almost fainted when I realized the bombshell. Gary isn't just some alien who probably created Bikini Bottom. He and his Illuminati peers are nothing short of gods, which is proven by this recreation of the Adam painting in which God is replaced with a dolphin. You remember all of this, but something I should not fail to mention is that the being on the receiving end of this interaction is Patrick. In the context of the episode, you'd think this factor may be to be negligible, but in fact it's not, because of our other highly suspicious link, the family tree. In the previous theories, I dismissed this tree connection because I thought it was irrelevant. This is increasingly appearing not to be the case. Why did Gary reincarnate into a body related to Patrick? Well, I think it's for the same reason the dolphins are seen in the Divine Painting. And for that, we need to know what's going on with Patrick. Oh wait, we already do. If you recall, I determined that Patrick's mind is an ever-evolving landscape. Basically, he has every version of himself from throughout the multiverse crammed into his brain. At first, I thought it was just something he was perceiving, or a fragmentation from some past event, or just some complicated belief system. But as more and more evidence surfaces that Bikini Bottom is a part of something greater, like the profoundly misplaced Jupiter Tetrahedron scene, I started drifting into the conclusion that everything was connected with Patrick too. Let me be clear. I think that Patrick's mental multiverse is real. I think he knows exactly what he is talking about, dumb or otherwise, and I think he's actually the only one who's aware of what's really going on here. Aside, of course, from Gary. 
the one responsible. At the very end of the Patrick theories, I deemed Patrick as possibly just being smart enough to recognize the facts. Each episode of Spongebob is a slightly altered universe, which is why the show is semi-inconsistent. Patrick knows he's on a TV show, but he certainly isn't the only one, given the dolphin censorship. You should remember all this, but the question of why Patrick, of all people, of all non-alien characters, is granted with this ability to shift his episode at will, is one that seemingly had no answer, until I found this artwork. It's the most sensible thing that can be drawn from this. If the dolphins represent divine aliens, which they most certainly, irrefutably do, then Patrick would represent the one gifted with knowledge. Patrick knows, and the craziest part in all of this is that all this time, I've had that three-parter sitting there entailing what he knows. I repeat, his mental multiverse is not mental, and he knows about the true nature of his reality. Patrick's intelligence, his multiversal displacement, his everything. He is the one gifted with knowledge. Now let me bequeath upon you the motherload of all plot twists because I had no idea how relevant this was until I reevaluated the situation. The knowledge being gifted to Patrick is in the form of a Krabby Patty. And what was my conclusion in the Gary theories? Why did the planets collide? Why was everything out of whack? It was because the lack of Krabby Patties in the film wrecked the entire balance of Bikini Bottom, which is entangled with the gas giants because it's where the exit is. The feng shui, the chi, the cosmic alignments, whatever you want to call it. The tetrahedron is the reality of Bikini Bottom, and the time machine glitch proves this entanglement. The show runs on Krabby Patties, the town runs on Krabby Patties, they dictate and power everything as the core of the show, and this is further proof of that as well. This is what they represent on a deeper level. This isn't the formula, this is unrelated to crabs. This is on the level of the show, not the subplot within it. And Patrick devours the lifeblood of the show like there's no tomorrow. To be fair, in his case, there is no tomorrow. The simultaneity of past and present will do that to you. He eats the most crabby patties, which, if they are distilled Taoistic balance, would mean Patrick is most aware of the nature of his environment. It makes sense, then, I suppose, why Plankton wants the secret formula to rule over Bikini Bottom. The film is quite blunt with this. The Patties control everyone, so completely, so totally. He's out to get the lifeblood of his own anomaly, just like Gary. One of the few things I brought up in these theories were the undeniable parallels between Gary and Plankton. As the most limited life forms around, they both have an innate desire to rise up and rule. Both wish to burn the city down and lead as Emperor. It's disturbingly specific. But as for why Patrick is the chosen one, well, I think it's because of his royalty. This is where my Flying Dutchman theory comes in, which is more like Gary Part 3.5 if you've seen it. Neptune and the other in-show gods are proxies, idols, celebrities for the Bikini Bottomites to worship, while the real beings literally run the show. This royalty is an interesting point to note because Neptune is also a king. Not entirely sure of my footing at this point, but here's what I know for certain. There could very well be yet another link. I'm not sure which came first, the chicken or the egg. Either Patrick's eating patties because he's been genetically predisposed since day one, or Patrick is aware of all this because he's eating so many patties and Gary just decided to resurrect himself in a nearby family tree and literally next door with the friend that can evade cosmic imbalance because of the hand he had in it, i.e. sponge out of water. So which is it? What is the link here? I'm inclined to say that this family tree is extremely important in one way or another, but give it a minute because I'm still not done with the other connections I found this time regarding the actual Flying Dutchman. I want to highlight that Atlantis is sort of a precursor civilization. The originals to Bikini Bottom's modernity, the old ones to the new ones. Atlantis is attempt number one, and it went sour. We know they have power and are to be feared because the Flying Dutchman, who I determined to be a demigod, aware of the dolphins, is afraid of the Atlanteans. Yes, the ghost that reshapes reality just to terrify people fears these goofy looking jelly beans who just so happened to relish in Elder God imagery. This... <clears throat> this is my predicament. Evidence and connections are clicking all of my otherwise contrastive theories together and I'm horrified. Because each point of interest is more disturbingly critical than the last and I'm being bombarded at Mach 1 with information I dare not attempt to grasp. I am referring to August 17, 2020 at 0900 hours whilst literally editing the theory of Dutchman I came to the realization that the reason the Dutchman was so utterly horrified of Spongebob's exposed brain was because he greatly resembled the Atlanteans. The question then is, just how OP are the Atlanteans? Their tech is clearly more advanced 
experienced than the likes of the more supernaturally oriented Dutchman, but has yet to reach the fringes of omnipresence like the dolphins have. This reaction is similar to the fear many characters display for other innocuous threats in the show, and is reminiscent of the ability Gary had to whip an innocent-looking Lovecraftian beast into shape, one that was probably sent as an assassin to take him out if I'm being completely honest. <sighs> Several months ago, I tethered my OCD to theorizing, and now I get struck with mild derealization every time I engage in metacognition. This has proven to be a tremendous mistake, but it doesn't make me wrong. If anything, it compounds my points in a twisted way. Simply put, this pattern identification conclusion is a mid-season finale off-ramp for my Spongebob videos, and I've now put myself into a position where, during June, I have to do a full series sweep of every DreamWorks film, every season of Total Drama, and every season of Spongebob to solve all these patterns, so if you don't comment evidence yourself, then I hazard to guess what will become of the recap statement I'm about to make. Patrick is aware to some degree of the trans-dimensional nature of his reality, because of his genealogical connection to the kings and gods. Gary is connected as well, but only because he was a god until his self-insertion fantasy went awry, and he landed dozens of generations down next to the sponge responsible like a glorified snakes in the ladders game. The further you go up this tree, the closer you get to the true ones responsible for the hellscape of Bikini Bottom, the supernatural flatland torn open by nuclear fission. Those responsible are known by few but Patrick catches glimpses because the plot device known as Krabby Patties fuels his knowledge of the farce that is his existence. Those who've received enlightenment can only dream of one day rising past the likes of false idols such as the King Neptunes and Demigod Dutchmen, and ascending to Jupiter where they can face the true creators, rise like the Atlanteans tried and were quarantined for their efforts, abandoned like the Bible of Bikini Bottom, stranded on the 3D tip of a flatland iceberg, desolated like the one responsible ejected to a measly form and left to wither and die as punishment for his crimes against nature, always out of reach. Even for Plankton, the one who nearly hijacked the army of I theorize other planktonic experiments ten times his own size who have failed before him, the one who's come closest on numerous occasions, the one who plays dirty and degrades his enemy with attrition, the one who usurped the false idols, staved off feng shui disequilibrium, built a time machine, and met his makers only to get bubbles expelled. They are the Illuminati that governs all. They are the sacrilegious inspiration behind the Cephalopod Lodge, and equally so to the supernatural basis for religion itself. They are the censors of Spongebob, the marine hyperspace beings that gaze upon all, the imperceivably timeless ancients. They are the double-crossing elitists who hire eldritch hitmen to take out Gary, and a daydream believer to take out their own proxy. So with that said, it's no wonder why Gary is out to get them, no wonder why their creations rebel, no wonder why this show is riddled with metaphysical violation on top of metaphysical violation and no wonder why the hell this is such a pantomime of pain to the theorizing bane of my already insane existence. We aren't done.